We are just a few months into the new year and investors may be wondering whether 2024 will be a repeat of last year with the continued strong performances of growth and technology stocks. We'll talk about that plus higher interest rates for longer and what it means for investors. Lance McGray with Advisors Asset Management joining us right after this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. Thank you so much for joining us. It is great to have you with us. If you are new to ETF Guide TV, be sure to hit the subscribe button. This will make sure that you never miss any of our original episodes like Spotlight, ETF Battles, and the other shows in our program lineup. Okay, just two months into the new year, investors may be wondering whether 2024 is going to be a repeat of last year with continued strong performance of tech stocks. We'll hear here to talk with us about that, plus so much more, is Lance McGray, head of ETF products at Advisors Asset Management. Lance, it's great to see you. Welcome. Hey, Stephanie. Nice to see you. Okay, let's start with interest rates. It feels like U.S. interest rates are going to stay a little bit higher for longer. Um, managing duration risk is something both investors and financial advisors are still a little concerned about. Uh, let's first of all break it all down. Give us the macro view on interest rates and where you think things stand. Sure. So it, it, it's certainly been a challenging last six months, um, specifically when we talk about interest rates. Right? If we if we go back a few months and you know back in December. You know, the markets were really expecting that we were going to have sizable rate cuts in 2024, right? Some predicting as many as eight cuts. Fast forward, fast forward a few months now, and, and what do we have, right? We have, uh, you know, hotter than expected labor market. We have, uh, you know, very solid employment numbers. We have sticky inflation. And now those expectations have really come down quite a bit, where now we're looking at only two or three rate cuts in 2024, with the first rates occurring sometime in June or July. So, you know, in other, in other words, um, you know, things have slowed down quite a bit in terms of, you know, expectations around interest rates. Um, and probably just as important as that is that there's going to be less uniform uh, in terms of how they come down going forward. And at the end of the day, that creates uncertainty and uh, with uncertainty creates a lot, a lot of volatility. Okay, so with that being said, let's dive into your ETF, the AAM Low Duration Preferred and Income Securities ETF, your ticker PFLD. You guys take a novel approach by seeking yield while minimizing duration risk, talking about risk. What problems does PFLD help solve for investors? Yeah, so one of the biggest conversations that we're having with investors and clients in 2024 is really around opportunity costs, right? And when we think about this, we just mentioned what interest rates are doing and how we expect to see elevated levels of, of interest rate volatility. Um, and with that said, you know, it's it's easy to see why we have nearly seven trillion dollars in money market funds, right? People are on the sidelines, they're worried about volatility, they're collecting their income levels from from their cash like securities. But what we're trying to talk to investors about and clients is the opportunity costs, right? At the end of the day, when you're in cash, right, that is the largest, that represents the largest opportunity cost out there, right? And unfortunately, um, if you don't invest in interest rates where we, we see them right now, if you wait longer, if you wait for the Fed to decrease rates, unfortunately, you've probably waited too long and now you're reinvesting in the, in the, in the curve much lower down. So one of the areas that we're talking to investors about is about preferred securities, right? And really, it's an area for investors to find the elevated levels of income that they're looking for. Um, and what really separates PFLD from the pack, and, and you sort of mentioned it in, in the name, is the low duration aspect of PFLD. Uh, you know, most preferred securities, most preferred hybrid and ETFs, that is, um, have longer duration. Right. And, and, and elevated levels of volatility around interest rates, that's going to be harmful for investors. And what PFLD does is it tries to minimize, minimize that risk by limiting the uh, securities that are held in the portfolio. So PFLD will only hold low duration preferred stocks, at those securities that have an effective duration of five years and less. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're getting the benefits of the asset class, high yield, diversification, tax efficiency. 
but you're doing so with about 60 to 70 percent reduction in duration. Okay, got it. That makes a lot of sense. So unlike last year, you know, when the NASDAQ trounced the S&P 500, these two equity benchmarks are posting similar results so far in 2024. It feels like there's a bit of a tug of war between growth versus value and between defensive and offensive industry sectors. Do you think this could be the beginning of a new stock market trend? You know, at, at AAM, our CIO view is that, you know, it makes a lot of sense to start dabbling in value names, right? And to be honest with you, I, I don't know if we can say clearly the NASDAQ 100 is not a value oriented name. But at this point, you know, I would say for those investors that are looking for value securities, um, you know, the fact is that the uh, NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 have a, about a 45 percent overlap right now. So if you're looking for value oriented securities, I would steer, steer clear of those two indices. Um, you know, when we look a little deeper into the underlying sector breakdowns of, say, the S&P 500, when we look at, you know, value oriented sectors, financials, industrials, uh, energies, materials, you know, those sectors only make up about 20 percent of the S&P 500. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you're looking for value, you know, there's other options out there and, and sort of in that light. Um, here at AAM, we just came out with an interesting piece. Um, you know, folks can find it on our website. Uh, it's labeled, uh, where is the value? And it, what, it, what it's really looking at is over the 130 plus securities out there, ETFs that is, that have value in the name, do these value ETFs really offer the value that you're thinking? And unfortunately, our findings have shown that even if the value, even if value is listed in the name of the ETF, you know, it really makes sense to take a deeper dive and make sure you're getting the exposure you want. Yeah, good advice there. I mean, value may not always mean value, but speaking of value orientation, um, you have the AAM High Dividend Value ETF lineup. So specifically, we're going to break these down a little bit. Um, the AAM S&P Emerging Markets High Dividend Value ETF. That ticker is EEMD. Um, this has been the beneficiary of this trend, you know, talking about the value orientation. EEMD has delivered some pretty impressive results compared to some of its dividend ETF peers. So let's get an update on EEMD, and then you can break down some of the rest of your AAM High Dividend Value lineup. Uh, so, yeah, as you mentioned, EEMD has been performing exceptionally well. Um, you know, against its broad-based benchmark, uh, the, the portfolio is, is outperforming its benchmark on a one-year, two-year, three-year, five-year, and even since inception uh, date. Um, so it's really a strong performer. Um, it's offering a tremendous amount of income. Uh, it's, it's SEC yield as of today is just over 7%. For those investors that are looking for income, it's a very sound tool. So, you know, taking it taking a step back, like, let's take a look at our high dividend value lineup. And the good news is all three of these solutions, SPDV, DMDV, and EEMD, follow the same underlying index methodology. And really, it comes down to two simple things. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find stocks that are offering elevated levels of income, but stocks that are also generating positive free cash flow yield. And when we blend those two together, we can get a very robust portfolio. We target five securities from each gig sector that have the best combination of highest free cash flow and highest dividend yield. It's rebalanced on a, a semi-annual basis. And again, these products are in, the, in a very tax efficient ETF wrapper. So very sound investments for those investors that are looking for um, you know, in this environment, it may not be the most prudent thing to go out and get low cost beta solutions. For example, if you want to capitalize on the potential benefit of, of the EM market, right? And we think the EM equity market is one of the one of the largest asset classes that is probably mispriced. Um, when we compare it against domestic equities, we're looking at about a 30 to 40 percent discount. Right. So that's a big opportunity. The question becomes. What is the most efficient way to capitalize on that? And I would say it is to stay clear of the broad-based, low-cost beta solutions and find securities that are a little more nuanced, a little more uh, proactive in the securities that they select. And that's exactly what our high dividend value lineup does. All right. Thank you, Lance. We're going to have to leave it there. We appreciate your insights so much. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. 
And to learn more about the ETF lineup at Advisors Asset Management, you can visit aamlive.com. We'll have the link posted in the description section below. Don't forget to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. Tell us how you've been enjoying our timely programs like this one, along with ETF Battles and the many others that you can find. Um, And you can also find us on Twitter at ETF Guide, I should say X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm Stephanie Stanton. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.